Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast. My special, special, special guest today is a talented singer, songwriter from Richmond, Virginia. Her name is Monet. Miss Monet, how are you today? I am amazing. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for joining me. Um, I know that, um, I guess we've been going back and forth for about like a month trying to <laughs> get this uh in interview in but i'm glad our our schedules both uh lined up and yes. uh, i'm excited to have you here um yes. you just you have a new single out which i just got called checked in um or check in i should say and yeah. um but we're going to talk about all that apparently there you had a great uh international debut in london from what i understand um, so we're going to get into that. But before we do, for those who don't know Monet, tell us about Monet. Yeah, I guess I could say I would call myself a spiritual alternative R&B artist or neo soul artist. I don't I can't really choose which genre, but um, <laughs> around that. Yeah, um, I'm 20 years old. Like you said, I'm from Richmond, Virginia. I've been making music for about about a year and two months now. I'm just getting started. So, yeah, I, um, I'm also a videographer and director. So when I, you know, um, do my videos and my content, I usually am a part of the whole process. Um, I also post my music on the full moon. So, or in conjunction with the moon. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so let's, let's talk about your childhood a little bit. So you're from Richmond, Virginia an area that mm -hmm. I know pretty well. I have family and, Virginia, D.C., Maryland. Um, so what was it like growing up? Uh, yeah. Were your parents big music fans or? Ooh, that's a good one. So I actually, so I was born in Richmond, spent a good amount of my younger days uh, here, and then I moved to Petersburg. So I would say that's where I went to like elementary school and stuff. I went to Wanna Hill Elementary. And um, I wasn't really into music I remember my my mom trying to get me to take piano lessons and guitar lessons and I hated it I did not want to do it at all um singing lessons I would sing in the shower I would sing in the house for them I would literally put on shows for them I would like just imagine a crowd but I would never do it um and I did chorus in elementary school I did like musicals elementary but middle school it was like I did none of that in high school. I did none of that. So, but my parents, my parents were big music fans, but none of them ever pushed me to do music or they never did music themselves. So, but they, I would also always uh, listen to them, listening to like Erica Baidu, Sade, those styles. And, it, and I was like, I like that. It just, yeah. So. Okay. So how did you go from not wanting to do music <laughs> to being a being a music artist it's interesting so i went to longwood university um it's a school down up over here in virginia um in farmville and i went to school for digital media um so i was big into videography directing editing um and i would come home on the weekends and i wanted to start networking because i wanted to start really expanding my business I guess so I would go to these open mics these music events and I was literally strictly the photographer the videographer and I connected with so 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 many different people wanting to work with me wanting to, for me to shoot a music video and um, I always wrote poems I used to do poetry in high school like for speech and debate I was actually competing I was actually the president of speech and debate but I used to write poetry and I used to compete for it so, but I never wrote actual music. And I remember my friend Toon, he's also an artist here. He was like, why don't you, why don't we make a song? You know, and I was like, hmm, you know, we can try. And I rem remember my friend Diego, he was a, a producer here. He sent me this beat. He was like, oh, like, do you, I was like, send me any beats you have. I didn't know any producer. So I was like, just send me a beat you have, whatever. And he sent me um, the one for, it's called Universe, which is kind of like, my biggest one on Spotify and I was like it just instantly like I like this so I wrote to it um we recorded it and that's how I really started and I remember my first time performing it was I guess because I was so used to performing in a speech and debate setting 
um, having to like control the, the room. So when I performed for the first time, it just automatically clicked. And I was like, I want to do this for the rest of my life. And that's how it worked. <laughs> okay. So you had yeah. no, uh, no apprehension about the fact that if you, if you thought your singing was good enough, because you had sung yeah. growing up and yeah. sung and okay. Yeah. I mean, yeah. When I first started, I wasn't, I was, I think when I first started, I was a little bit nervous, I guess, but yeah, with singing when I was younger and getting that positive feedback and um, I had to, I mean, when I first started, I wasn't where I am now. I had to kind of find my voice and yeah. Okay. Um, do you have siblings who sing as well or it's just, just you I or? four siblings and it's literally just me it's just, just me I think out of my whole family immediate family I'm the only musician oh wow okay yeah. um and just curious what, what do they think about your um your success oh they <laughs> my mom my well okay my mom and my dad but more specifically my dad he always says he'll he, when I was younger he just knew he would see my name in lights one day and I kind of was like whatever like you know, he's my dad, he's going to say that. But the more and more and more I started to perform and started to get into my sound, I was like, I see what he means. They thoroughly enjoy it because I dropped out of school to do this full time. Oh, wow. So yeah, I dropped out of college. So my I was in my second year and dropped out. So obviously it was like a little bit of apprehension from them. They were like, oh, are you sure? You know, but they saw what I could do and they was like, mm, it makes sense. Okay. Um, so like I said, I, I got checked in, but I also checked out some other, your other stuff, Loner, Universe, 777. Um, so when was your, when was your first, um, I think you say you've been in the business, I guess almost two years now, but um, when was your first release? What, and what was that? My first ever release was Brunch in the Garden. Mm -hmm. um, it was a single, it was a feature with my friend, Sean. It was not singing. It was more of like a melodic rap kind of thing and um I released that in August so technically yeah so it's been a year since my first release a okay all yeah. right and is uh is checked in is that part of a an EP or an album or is that check-in is just a single for just now a single. okay yeah is there an album or an EP in the works or just you're going to just uh, do or... maybe I'm I'm kind of in the period of my music career, I guess, where I'm trying to really, really figure out what I want to do. I want to start producing. And I'm hope I'm in hopes that I'm learning now. I'm in hopes in my next album or EP, I can record everything, produce everything. And it's going to take some time. So maybe it's in the works, I guess. I guess kind of. <laughs> okay. But for now, yeah. you're, you're content on just releasing singles and. Yeah. As they come. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Um, so tell us about uh, tell us about checked in or check in. I don't know why uh -huh. I keep saying checked in, but check in. Tell me about the song. Did you write it? Did you? Yeah, I wrote it. All okay, of it. all right. And so um, what? I from what I understand, it's uh, it's addressing um, not never giving up um, the struggles that we go through in life and how to deal with that. Um, okay. But those are my words. What wh yeah, yeah, like what it. say you? Um, I guess it's kind of a conversation with myself. I think around the time that I wrote it, because I released this November this month, I wrote this maybe a month or two ago. Um, and it was kind of in the period when I'm trying to figure out still as I'm still figuring out, but like what I want to do with my career. And, um, you know, I was performing and I was doing all these things, but I feel like I, I'm very spiritual and I believe in meditating and I believe in, you know, taking your time and sometimes taking a break with things, you know, not having to be on go all the time. And I feel like the past couple of months has been nothing but me on go. So I think check-in was kind of a reminder to myself to check in with yourself. And, um, you know, you have to be in the present and you have to remember like you're human and I'm not just a music artist. I'm also an artist. I'm um, I'm sorry. I'm also a human. I'm also, I do other things too. So that's why I wrote check-in. It's more of like a conversation with myself, but I also see how a lot of people can resonate with it. 
because it is kind of, even though it's personal to me, I think that a lot of people kind of would have that same issue with not checking in with themselves regularly and kind of losing themselves in a way. So yeah, it's like a reminder. Okay. So it's yeah. kind of more um, therapy, I guess. In a way, yeah. Yeah. So tell us about the uh, your debut in, I believe, London. Um, yeah. What was that like? Um, it was beautiful. I miss London. I would love, I would live there. So yeah, I went with four, I went with three other artists, all from Virginia. I'm the only one from, from Richmond. The other three are from the, um, uh, Virginia beach area, 757 area. So, um, yeah, we went and we did a show down there and then we went to like open mics to kind of explore bigger and the love and support that, you know, we got was crazy i have a video of one of my songs because i performed at open mic and you can only perform one and it was so hard to choose like which one would like fit the vibe and i chose um, my song are you listening and um the the londoners were repeating it back to me they wanted me to run the chorus back and it was like so surreal they were like repeating it with me and it was crazy so london was beautiful it's so different from here but i love it Okay. Uh, I've, I've yeah. heard that about London, that they're very um, appreciative of um, mm -hmm. uh, particularly R&B and um, maybe jazz, R &B, especially R&B. I think they really love R&B. Now, you said you went with three other artists from yes. Virginia. Are you on a label or are you independent? I'm I'm solely independent. I'm independent. Um RVG management, which is kind of a management company, they managed the other three artists and they were so kind to allow me to go with them. You know what I mean? It was like a RVG management um, type of travel thing, but they allowed me to come with. Yeah. Okay. How long were you over in uh, London? Oh my goodness. We were there for a week and a half. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And I, I want to add, um, there's this um guy named Gary McCullum um he is the one who kind of funded the trip he has a production oh, I'm sorry like a management company an artist development company called um Playfair Productions so I just wanted to add that in there so a part of RVG management there is Playfair Productions and so that's how I was able to go on the trip but yeah we were okay. there for a week and a half week and a half we'll continue our episode after this message are you looking for a reliable way to transfer money to family and friends? Check out the Cash App. It's safe, easy, and convenient. Just download the app from the Apple or Google Play Store and start receiving and sending money in a few minutes. Sign up today and receive $5. And don't forget to use our referral code. BGRCWQX. Swag at shop.bringbacksoulmusic.com. Hey, I'm Kenny Lattimore, and you're checking out the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with my brother Todd Woodson. Now, back to our conversation. Okay, so you, you went to London. Are you um, are you performing here in the, in the States, too, or are you going on tour? What's the, uh, what's the plan like to promote your music? Oh, yeah. So no tours yet. Um, I mean, I still do perform here. I'm performing actually um in virginia beach next month but yeah there's no tours yet that was more of like a getting a feel of a new country and getting a feel of that new vibe you know in london so yeah no okay. no big tours yet yeah no but. big tours yet but it's coming hopefully it's coming. okay great um now how would you how would you describe your i think in the beginning you said it's sort of like neo so um, but how else would you, cause when I hear your music, I hear, um, um, very melodic, uh, um, maybe more of a jazz influence. Ooh. Um, it's very, very soothing and I guess pretty music, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. but how would you describe, uh, your music? Like you said, like, mm -hmm. um, soothing, melodic. I want, I want. I guess people to feel like they're in a dream in a way, or they're floating. Um, that's what most of my music sounds like. Um, I want it to feel like a journey. You know, you're 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 wanting to know what I'm about to say next. You know, not you're just not mesmerized by the sounds, but also by the lyrics. You know, so 
Yeah, I, and like I said, like the genre, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would describe it as like alternative R&B or neo soul. Can't really decide, but yeah, some yeah, it's so it's soul music. It's like music for the soul. Right. Uh, I'm sorry. I think you may have covered this earlier, but who who were some of your influences? Um, Ooh, when you were yeah. Younger? Yeah. Oh, Sade, Erica Badu, um, Janae Aiko. I get compared to Janae Aiko a lot. Um, yeah, those are the big three. Those are my big three. Sade, Erica Badu, and uh, Janae Aiko. Okay. I can hear a lot of Sade in your music too, Sade. Okay, yeah. Who's, who's one of my favorite artists as well. Okay. Um, what's, um, so what's, what's, since 2023 is a right around the corner uh, for us, What's on tap for 2023 Oof. for you? Just uh, hopefully more blessings, um, performing more. I'm hoping to branch out of state more, maybe go out of the country again. Um, maybe some festivals coming up, hint, hint. Um, and yeah, as far as like dropping music, I'm not sure yet, but definitely um i'm experimenting more with my sound i think it's 2023 okay um mm -hmm. you mentioned that you are an independent artist um mm -hmm. is your goal to sign with a with the label or strictly remain independent uh we interview artists and it's about 50 50 some want to stay independent others want to you know because of the ma the backing sign with the label but where do you stand on that it's I feel like for me, it's dependent. I would prefer to be independent. I know that's a little bit harder, obviously. Um, but with the label, you know, obviously it, it depends on the label. So I wouldn't say the label is out of the question. You know what I mean? Depending on what the label is and what they're bringing me. But for now, I think independent is like where I where I stand. Okay. Um what do you, what is your, um, cause you said you write, you do videography, um, you do a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. Um, what's your writing style? Like, how do you, how do you write? Do you set time, time apart every day or just when you feel inspired? How do you, how do you go about writing, uh, great music? It's a little bit of both. So on Wednesdays, Wednesdays are literally my beat day where I'll go and find beats and I'll just to keep that flow. Um, so every once a week I like to write, but sometimes I'll find a beat on Monday or Tuesday and I got to jot down something, but usually it, the beat comes first and okay. then I'll write, I'll, you know, form a um, melody to the beat and write to the melody. If that makes sense. Yeah, definitely. Um, I'm just curious, where do you, um, uh... How do you, cause I'm, I don't write music at all, but how do you go about finding beats? Is it, Ooh. I mean, I know little Nas X bought a beat online and yeah, yeah. and the success he had with, um, I guess what was it, old country road or something. I don't know what, yeah. The, yeah. <laughs> most of my, most of my beats are from YouTube actually. I just buy the exclusive, but um, a lot of people have been sending me beats um, now because i guess you know they want to work with me so i've been doing that but also from the beats that i found it on youtube i make sure that if 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 i buy a beat from the person i make sure like it doesn't just end there like we form a relationship you know sometimes they'll make custom beats for me mm -hmm. um you know what i mean just to build that relationship so it's it's youtube beats actually but sometimes mm -hmm. it may be somebody sent me a beat you know i'm not biased <laughs> okay. No, I was going yeah. to, I mean, that's a great, um, a great answer. Cause I was, I was about to ask you when you said you bought beats, how do you ensure that the beat you're buying is the only one that they're selling? You're the only one they're selling it to that. It doesn't end up with 10 other artists with the same right. beat. So once you buy the beat, um, this is what I believe. So once you buy the beat exclusively, nobody else, or there's unlimited and then there's exclusive exclusive, I believe I own. Mm. Um, so, well, depending on the deal, I guess, but usually the producer, what they're supposed to do is say it's sold. So nobody else can use it or but try to buy it. Um, but there's probably, I don't know, there's probably somebody 
that is, has hopped on that song, but it's legally mine if I buy it exclusively. You know, they can't make money off of that beat. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so Monet, um, what type of advice, because you're so young, um, uh, particularly young in age and also young in a business, what kind of advice would you give um, other artists who may want to uh, follow in your footsteps? I mean, they hear all this game about buying beats and, you know, that kind of thing. So what kind of advice would you, would you give them if they wanted um, to do that or do yeah. what you do? Yeah, I would say try new things, be uncomfortable, be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, make sure you know what, like if you sign anything, reading is super important, you know, um, networking is super important. I would not be in the position I am today if I didn't go out of my way, you know, and be un like talk to people and make sure that I'm reach I'm very proactive and reaching out to people. You know, I don't have a manager, so a lot of the things that a manager is supposed to do, and that's fine, especially when you start out, you know, you're going to want to learn the business side because the music side is important. Sure. Like the creative side, but the business side is super important and it's super important that you research and you know what's going on, especially if you're independent, especially if you don't have a manager. Um, and as far as like the creative side, like, you know, it's cool to experiment, stay true to yourself. You know, making music to making, trying to make a hit is cool. Like, I think everybody wants to make a hit and blow up. But, you know, I think when first starting, it's super important to find your sound and find what you want to release, not what you think other people will like, if that makes sense. So. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I know Check Check In was just released earlier this month. How has yeah. it been? How has it been received by your your fans and Oh. the public in general yeah it's been really good i i post a lot on tiktok i have a i have a tiktok where i post like spirituality tips and i'll post like my music i've just started posting my music um everybody's loving it everybody's loving it i've been on some uk radio shows that i didn't even know how they found my music it's been <laughs> it's been crazy to me like i'm like okay i love it i i enjoy i, I love it it's been okay. good it's been really good Our Okay, so I guess over here in the states, uh, I guess Spotify is the big thing. So how has it been? How, how does it work? I mean, is it like downloads from Spotify, or how does it? Oh, I get you. Um, with Spotify, it's stream. So streams. So if you okay. play it, you know, if you play it, it'll show you how many streams you've got so far, or something like that. Okay. Um, yeah, but yeah it's been good it's been good i i haven't checked apple music in a while but it's been good on spotify and tiktok for sure and instagram too but yeah okay um so monet um anything else you want to add well let's talk about some of your other your earlier stuff um i heard um 777 i heard universe um loner mm -hmm. I, I like that um but but tell us about those songs tell us um yeah, yeah, I guess I can tell you about my project where all those songs are on. It's 777. Okay. 777 is my first project that I've ever released. And I released this um, in February on 22222. On the, it wasn't a full moon, but it was two, It was February 22nd, 2022. Um, and it's a five song EP. It's super short, only 15 minutes, but it basically talks about my spiritual journey. I literally call it my baby because from when you start it, from when you end, it brings you on this journey through my spirituality. Um, and it's been it's been received really well on TikTok, especially Universe, because that's where I started mark I started marketing my stuff um, around that time in February, and I was promoting Universe. And I think that's where a lot of people found me through that song. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's my that's my other stuff. Um, a lot of the stuff on the EP, actually, uh, Loner and 777 was actually co-written by my, um, he engineers, and he um, helped me write some of that. Sol His name is Solomon, um, but yeah. Okay. Uh, Monet, tell people how they can reach out to you on uh, social media. 
Yeah, you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, wherever at Monet of the Moon on everything, M-O-N-E-A of the Moon. Find me on Spotify or Apple Music or Tidal, whatever, whatever streaming platform you use at Monet with the accent over the A. And um, yeah. Okay. Uh, Monet, anything else you want to add before we uh, cut this interview? Um, I just want to say I'm extremely grateful for you interviewing me. I really appreciated the questions um, and expect a lot for me in the future. All right. Any upcoming shows like around Christmas time or any Christmas shows or anything yeah, that we look up show. forward to? Yeah, I actually have a show on the 23rd in Virginia Beach. Um, it's called Vibe Fest. Sorry, it's called Vibe Fest. Um, so that's my last show, I think, of the year, closing out with that. Virginia Beach. Um, hopefully, have the band, the whole shebang. <laughs> okay, and that's I'm sorry, the 23rd. You said? Tw- yes, the 23rd, December 23rd. Okay, and we'll um, we'll post uh, Monet's uh, upcoming event on our website at bringbacksellmusic.com, um, and they can get tickets. How do they get tickets if they want to come see you? Online. 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 Okay. I can, I can send you a little link. Okay, great. And like I said, we'll get that posted. All right, Monet, uh, I appreciate you taking the time today. Thank you. All right. And you have a happy holiday. Thank you. Um, I'm going to give you the last word if you want to say anything before we close. Ooh, pressure. No, I'm joking. Um, (laughs) um, Like I said, you know, expect more from me. This is hopefully the last, not the last time that you'll hear my name and see my name. And yeah. All right. Um, Monet, again, thank you for taking the time. I would encourage everybody to check out Monet. Um, really great music from this young up and coming artist. Uh, Monet, I appreciate you. Thank you. All right. And that's the Bring Back Soul Music podcast. And we'll be right back. Calling all lovers of soul music. The time to make soul music relevant again is now. You've been listening to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast with Todd Woodson. If you enjoyed today's show, be sure to tell a friend. Make sure you never miss an episode by subscribing to our newsletter at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Well, that's our show for today. I'd like to thank my special guest, Monet. You can find out about Monet on her social media sites as well as on our website at bringbacksoulmusic.com. Don't forget, you can listen to the Bring Back Soul Music Podcast on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, and Pandora. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Bring Back Soul Music TV. If you have any questions or comments, please email us at comments at bringbacksoulmusic.com. I'm Todd Woodson. Thank you for joining us. See you next week.